Radhika, you say that a prolonged lockdown is unsustainable, yet to jumpstart the economy when virus cases are still on the rise pose pretty much a lot of risk too. How are you factoring that in into your uh, economic calculations? Uh, thanks, Linda. Happy to be here. Uh, certainly, I think it's not an easy decision for the authorities to consider opening up. Um, you know, India has among the most uh, has undertaken among the most stringent lockdowns uh, in the region, uh, and it's you know we are in the fourth phase now, and I think slowly uh, restrictions are being eased. Uh, but they still can't. They have to keep an eye on the health aspect as well because uh, to to keep a second wave um, of infection, you know, that risk at bay. Uh, but it's certainly exploring uh, economic costs, and I think uh, we will get a glimpse of the first uh, data later tonight. Uh, and what where the first quarter GDP uh, numbers are expected, and what we've seen, even though the infection really hit mar in March, and uh, in the lockdown went into effect in late March, high frequency indicators um, across you know industrial activity, uh, if you talk about services, uh, non-essential spending, all of that has has taken a knock in March, and I think that will perhaps to some extent uh, uh, overwhelm you know the better Jan and Feb numbers. Uh, so our growth forecast for the first quarter. Uh, is at 1.3 percent. Is this a bit shy of consensus? Uh, this compares to 5.3 uh, percent last year. Uh, so certainly setting the pace uh, for what will be, I think, a pretty difficult uh, 2020. Well, difficult 2020, but Q2 in particular is set to be disastrous. We have Goldman saying that could be a, uh, a contraction of 45 percent. Bloomberg Economics expecting a contraction of uh, 25. 45, 25, huge numbers. What are you looking at? So we too, I mean, on the year-on-year uh, -year front, um, I think we could be anywhere between 15 to 20 percent down on the year. And, you know, April in this midst will be the sharpest decline. Uh, again, not many of the data indicators for April are in yet, but taking cues from where the March numbers are, you can already feel that, you know, uh, trade has been extremely strong. They've seen 50, 60 percent fall in exports, uh, which again tells you how bad the situation was outside of India, uh, but in-house as well, many other high-frequency indicators showing a deep decline. So I think the April numbers would be perhaps the, the deepest or rather the most intense slowdown will be evident there. And now, uh, as we head into May, uh, in May, when some of the numbers that we are looking at, you know, uh, the daily or weekly numbers, uh, that is telling us in terms of employment, there is some respite in terms of Google, Google Mobility Report, for example, there's some respite. So as restrictions are easing, I think the, uh, the net negative on growth is easing up, but I think we are not out of the depth as yet. So certainly, uh, if you were to look at the whole year, uh, the second quarter is at a third quarter, um, second being the deepest and third not yet out of, uh, out of negative territory, we will take the whole year into net contraction. And I think this will mark the first recession for, for the country uh, since uh, 1980. Yeah. Uh, so perhaps a, a long recession there. Uh, it's, you're, you're looking more in the agricultural sector, Radhika. That has seemed to be largely unaffected by COVID-19. Do you think the sector can provide a bit of a cushion? Uh, certainly, I think the hopes are really high um, that agriculture will provide uh, much awaited, uh, you know, much uh, needed support at this point. Uh, we need to remember that unlike the past, you know, in the 80s, Agriculture used to be a very big part um, of, you know, big contributor to overall growth. Now it's, it's, uh, it is about 15% contribution to overall growth. So it will help offset. Uh, till now, the infections have been largely an uh, urban um, development. You know, rural areas are not as badly affected. Uh, and we are seeing in some of, you know, some of the corporates we spoke to uh, in terms of tractor sales uh, and some of the consumption that's happening on the rural side is still holding up better than the urban areas. So hopes are really high from that income part as well as the supply end. Uh, that part will provide uh, some support. But I think uh, inevitably uh, you would still uh, see a net contraction because the non-farm activity, especially industrial activity, and the bigger chunk, which is services, uh, and in services you have, you know, to the likes of uh, tra trade, airlines, hospitality, uh, entertainment, all of that, uh, certainly taken yeah. a huge knock. So agriculture will provide a counterbalance, but I don't think it will be able to make up uh, for the slowdown we're expecting in the services as well as industrial activity. In terms of the employment 
in numbers, uh, you know, obviously we've seen think tanks that have thrown numbers like 122 million Indians that have lost their jobs. Of course, the crisis with migrant workers is certainly top of mind as well. Do you think states and companies are doing enough to, to keep these migrant workers staying in these major centers and not going home and keeping them employed? Or is there more that needs to be done? Um, so you know, because the lockdown went into effect uh, with uh, not much of notice in terms of you know, uh, time uh, allowed for adjustment, certainly that is the plight of uh, migrant workers has certainly been um, uh, uh, something that was unfortunate and, and ha continues to evolve. So uh, initially uh, uh, they were still confined to their area of employment. Uh, since then, the government has run trains to make sure that they get back to their homes. Uh, you know, so they, most of them have gotten back. And now that activity is going to resume, uh, I think it remains to be seen how fast they're able to come back to their work of, uh, you know, employment area. So that sure. uh, um, is something that is causing short-term displacement, especially supply chain disruptions. The companies are going back to work, but they don't have ample, especially the labor-intensive industries. Uh, they don't have ample uh, um, employment. And on the rural end, I think uh, there is a national employment scheme where more funds have been put in to make sure that at their homes, sure. at least, they have some uh, uh, you know, asset-creating uh, uh, facilities. And Rana, we had that surprise cut from the RBI last week. The fiscal stimulus we've seen, some say, is not enough to really bring back demand. Is there still much room for, for policymakers to really boost growth right now? Um, you know, um, central banks, uh, uh, by in essence, are the nimbler party, right? So the RBI has certainly taken a lot of proactive measures. They've cut the, the benchmark rate is down by about 115 basis points year to date. Uh, and then you have the government is also put in. Certainly, the room is very limited, but I think the cost of inaction um, is, is higher given the, uh, the overall decline in activity. So while recent policy response uh, will get us through the lockdown phase or the lockdown phases. I do think there is need to do much more, um, and we do think that there will be another leg of support, perhaps more targeted um, at the sectors that have been affected the most, uh, as well as you know support for the financial sector by way of uh, capital infusion, and that could be once the lockdown is over and the authorities have a better um, you know idea or visibility on who and where uh, has been the maximum impact. So yes, I think the room is limited, but nonetheless. Uh, there needs to be uh, ample fiscal support. And I think there is a broad recognition, and we do think what is announced is perhaps uh, a part of it, and there is more to come later this year. Uh, but that will certainly push up the center right. as well as the state's uh, fiscal deficit for the year.